Okay, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel explaining amplitude modulation. So the title is amplitude or linear modulation. In the first part, we'll do introduction about baseband and carrier modulation. Why to modulate? Now, the parts that we're going to cover in the, in the issue on the topic of amplitude modulation, we'll start with quick introduction, which is this uh, video, baseband versus carrier modulation. Then we'll go on to double sideband amplitude modulation. We'll go on the, into the different types of amplitude modulation as shown in the diagram here. We'll, we'll start with double sideband. Then we'll go on to degeneration of, of, of AM signals. Then we we'll go on to amplitude modulation or double sideband with carrier. Um, then we we'll go on to quadrature amplitude modulation, single sideband, vestigial sideband, and we will conclude with carrier acquisition. In every one of these types, we'll look at the generation and the demodulation. For this specific um, part, for the first part, we would like to recall and remind you of the meaning of spectrum and bandwidth, baseband versus bandspand, why do we modulate, and then we'll look at types of amplitude, types of carrier modulation, and then specifically we'll look at the types of amplitude modulation. Okay, so what is the spectrum and what's the bandwidth? When we look at things in the frequency domain, we can define the spectrum to be the range of frequency that contain the signal. If you look at this double side, if you look at this spectrum, the x-axis is frequency. So we can define the spectrum as the range of values that contains our signal. Now the absolute bandwidth is the width of this spectrum. The absolute is whatever you have non-zero value, this is the absolute then to, till the end. This width is called the band, the bandwidth. Okay, so if you take the absolute value, then it means the absolute bandwidth, whatever you have non-zero value, up to the end of this band. And this width is called the width of the spectrum. Practically, the absolute bandwidth is not used. We use the effective bandwidth because it's not, it's not possible to have zero uh, because of the presence of noise. So we look at the effective bandwidth. If you want to look at the effective bandwidth, or of, often called just the bandwidth, when we say the bandwidth, usually we look at the effective bandwidth. So the band, it's the band of frequencies containing most of the energy of the signal. What's the meaning of most of the energy of the signals? Most of the energy of the signals, some, some people will define it to be the half power. You look at the maximum value, and then you go to the range of frequencies until your signal level goes into half power. Or in the dB scale, you go minus 3 dB. So you find your peak, go down minus 3 dB, draw a line, and this is called the lower cutoff frequency, this is called the higher cutoff frequency, and this is called the bandwidth, or the effective bandwidth. In short, we just say the bandwidth. The lower figure shows you more of a practical figure. You're not going to have like this zero. So sketching things in dB, signal power in dB versus frequency. Again, this is double sideband, so this is just the mirror image on the right and the left. Look at the maximum frequency. Go down minus 3 dB, that will be the effective bandwidth. As, as we go into higher frequencies, the signal level becomes very weak, and you can see that we have side lobs. Remember that this is dB scale, and we're already minus 10 dB is here. Okay, so these are logarithmic scale rather than being linear. Oh, and whenever we talk about the spectrum, usually we look at the DC component, which is the value of the, of the amplitude of the signal at zero frequency. At zero frequency, give you a hint about the DC component, component of or at the zero frequency. Now, I'd like to share with you a few uh, realistic examples. Uh, you know, we have two types of signals, baseband signals and verse, versus passband signals. Baseband signals are signals in their natural form. Usually they start from very low frequency up to a maximum frequency. For example, our voice is in its baseband format. It starts from approximately zero, a little bit higher, up to four kilohertz. We call this a baseband signal. Uh, the TV or the TV signal or the video signal, um, of course, it varies, it depends on the standard, but we can think of a uh, good video signal that covers six megahertz. The video signal it's in, in its natural format, it's in baseband format, goes from very low frequency to about six megahertz. 
a signal may be sent as is in its baseband format especially if have if we have our own wire if you have for example uh, a video player connected to a display or a mic connected to a speaker then we send the signal in its baseband format because we have our dedicated channel and um, we don't need to play with the frequency content of the signal otherwise if we don't have our dedicated wire or our dedicated channel then we need to convert the signal into passband so an example shown here is the voice signal in the time domain okay this is uh, the amplitude of the signal changes with time domain the lower figure is showing you the spectrum or the frequency content the one side spectrum of the voice so we have from very low frequencies we have nothing at zero then it goes up and then it goes start to decay again so this is the power of a voice signal um, versus the frequency this is 5 kilohertz by the way because this is 10 raised, 10 multiplies by 10 raised to the power 4 so this is 5 kilohertz our voice is almost up to um, 3.5 or 4 if you like kilohertz so voice and, sig and, and videos in their, in their acquired format, basic format, it's co they call it bass band. They start from the bass frequency zero. Otherwise, we need to modulate them or change them to high frequency, and this is called pass band. Now, the process, the process of changing a signal from bass band to pass band is known as modulation. So what and why? What's modulation? The modulation is the process of shifting the baseband signal to passband, the passband range. This is called modulation, to modulate, to adjust the frequency. The process of shifting the, the signal back to its baseband frequency is called demodulation. And usually we have the modem, mod from modulation, demo, modem, dem means uh, demodulate. So we have, we're combining the two processes, calling it modem. And now we have, we have defined the meaning of mod, modulate and demodulate, changing the signal frequency content from baseband to passband. A valid question would be why? Why would somebody change the signal content from uh, baseband to passband? There are different reasons, especially if we don't have our own dedicated wire. We need to modulate, change the frequency if we want to send multiple signals simultaneously over the same channel. So simultaneous transmission of several signals. This is called FDM. FDM stands for Frequency Division Multiplexing. Multiplexing different signals in the frequency domain, which means I need to adjust their, their frequency content. Another reason for modulation is to come up with a practical antenna design. You know that as we change the frequency, go to higher frequency, uh, we get smaller antenna size. The antenna length or size is inversely proportional to the frequency. So one motive to modulate the signal is to change it to higher frequency to get a smaller antenna size. Another thing is the propagation characteristics of different frequencies or vary with, the, with different frequencies. There are signals that can penetrate walls like low frequency. And this is usually mixed up. The true thing is that low frequency in general have the tendency of propagating through walls while high frequency uh, does not. High frequency tend to be line of sight uh, or good for line sight applications. Of course, specific frequency have specific uh, features like being reflected from ionosphere and so on. So we might want to change the frequency to get certain propagation characteristics. And finally, we would like, we might be willing to exchange power for bandwidth. Changing the, the frequency, not just frequency location, or to high frequency we can also play with the bandwidth make it wider or narrower and so on so we can exchange bandwidth for for quality this might not be clear now but when we cover fm frequency modulation that would be clear uh, at that stage now this is important i want you to know what modulation is and why would somebody modulate you need to list the three or the four items here now, what types of modulation or carrier modulation do we have? Okay, uh, a carrier is a sinusoidal signal that is going to be modulated by the message. The message, we refer to the message as small m of t in the frequency domain, is going to be capital M of f. So in modulation, one characteristic of a signal, generally a sinusoidal wave, known as the carrier, this is the carrier, 
One of its characteristics, either the amplitude, the frequency, or the phase, will be adjusted change based on the information or the message. Okay, this is called modulation. So if you change here the red part of the signal, we call it amplitude modulation. Or if you change the frequency, we call it angle modulated. And I mean, angle modulated is whatever is inside the angle. So inside angle, we have phase modulated. If you change this part of the, of, of the angle, or we have frequency modulated, follow the colors, uh, if you change uh, this part of the angle. Now note that we are using the word modulation A here, and sometimes as we go on the course, we'll be using it for different meaning. So modulation is in general is adjusting, changing. But as we go on in the course, we will be having later on delta modulation, PCM, uh, PPM, otherwise, there are different types of words that are used without having a carrier. But for now, let us focus on modulation, adjusting one characteristic of a carrier to represent the message or the signal. Okay, so the diagram here shows you if you have the following example for the message, this is a, a, a digital example, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, whatever. Then you can see here that the information being 0 or 1 is reflected in the amplitude. Okay, having high amplitude means 1, nothing means 0. In this example, they all have the same amplitude. However, the difference is in the frequency of the signal. This is FM example, where high frequency means 1, low frequency means 0. In the last example, we have the same frequency, same amplitude. What changes is the phase. Notice here, either we start from low to high or from high to low. From low to high, representing 1. From high to low, goes to, to represent 0. They have same amplitude, same frequency. What changes is the starting point of uh, the signal. This is called phase modulation. So in this slide, we covered the types of modulation. In the next slide, I'll just list with you the different types, the different subtypes of amplitude modulation. So in this slide, the types, the types of amplitude modulation, we agreed that we're going to change the amplitude. So the angle will not be touched. We have fixed carrier. And we are going to assume that the phase is zero. In fact, we're not going to change it. So let it be a constant, and to make things simple, we're going to call it just zero. Uh, the message is M of T, and it has a full transform of capital M of F. The bandwidth of the message is B hertz. These are standard notation. And of course, if you want to use radian per second, it's going to be two by times B. Again, this diagram shows you the different types of amplitude modulation. We'll go on them one by one. We'll have different videos to cover them. So we have double sideband with carrier which we call double sideband plus carrier or AM. We have double sideband subrest carrier. We have um, single sideband. We have vestigial sideband. And finally, we have quadrature amplitude modulations. We have different variations, and we're going to cover them all. The most important one is the double sideband plus carrier, which is the one that's used in the AM radio. Others have advantages, disadvantages, and please follow up with us to find out uh, about the details here. Thank you.